Hello. Today I'm going to read The Name Jar. What do you think it's going to be about? Where'd you get your name from? Why do you have your name? Have you ever wanted to change your name? Find out how you got your name. I got my name in my culture from my grandmother, Margarita. The Name Jar. These are little notes that the, her classmates thought of new names for her. The Name Jar. Mm -hmm. Through the school bus window, Uni looked out of the strange buildings and houses on the way to her new school. It was her first day, and she was both nervous and excited. <clears throat> she fingered the little block of wood in her pocket and remembered leaving her grandmother at the airport in Korea. Her grandmother had wiped away Unhee's tears and handed her an ink pad and a small red satin pouch. Your name is inside, she had said. My name? Unhee had wondered. Again, she took out the red pouch to look at the wooden block with her name carved in it. As she ran her fingers along the grooves and ridges of the Korean characters, she pictured her grandmother's smile. Is that, there we go. Is that thing for show and tell? A boy asked Unhee surprisingly. Unhee looked up as more kids leaned over. No, it's mine, Unhee answered quickly, putting the pouch back in her pocket. Are you new here? What's your name? A girl asked. Unhi said Unhi. Une? The girl asked, scrunching up her face. Ooh, ooh, Unhi. Some kids chanted. No, no, Unhi corrected. It's spelled U N H E I. It's pronounced Yun Hai. Oh, it's you, hey. The boy said, like, you, hey, what about, hey, you? Just then, the bus pulled up to the school, and the doors opened. Only hey hurried to get off. You, hey, bye-bye, the kids yelled as she left. Only hey felt herself blush. Only hey stood in the doorway of her new and noisy classroom. She was relieved that the kids on the bus had gone to other rooms, but her face still felt red. Aren't you going in? asked a curly-haired boy with lots of dots on his face. You're the new girl, right? he asked cheerfully. Unhe nodded, and before she could walk away, the boy took her hand and pulled her through the door. Here's a new girl, he announced so loudly that the teacher, Mr. Kokotis, almost dropped his glasses. Mr. Kokotis thanked him and greeted Unhe. Please welcome our newest student, he said to the class. She and her family just arrived from Korea last week. Unhei smiled broadly and tried not to show her nervousness. What's your name? Someone shouted. Unhei pictured the kids on the bus. Um, I haven't picked out yet, she told the class, but I'll let you know by next week. As Mr. Kokona showed her to her desk, she felt many round, curious eyes on her. Why doesn't she have a name? She heard someone whisper, maybe she robbed a bank in Korea and needs a new identity, a boy replied. Why do you think she didn't want to say her name? On the bus home, nobody teased her, but Unhe kept thinking about her name. How was school, Unhe? Her mother asked when she walked in. Did you understand the teacher? Unhe simply nodded. She unpacked her school bag and set the red pouch by a photograph of her grandma. I'm glad you are learning English well, her mother said. You must study hard, behave nicely, and get good grades to show that you're a good Korean. I will, replied Unhai, but, but I think I would like my own American name, she said quickly. Her mother looked at her with surprise. Why? Unhi is a beautiful name. Your grandma and I went to a name master for it. But it's so hard to pronounce, Unhe complained. I don't want to be different from all the American kids. You are different, Unhe, her mother said. That's a good thing. Unhai just wrinkled her nose. I'm not pronouncing it right. Later that day, Unhai and her mother went grocery shopping in their new neighborhood. 
They passed Vidal's Falafel, Tony's Pizza, and Dot's Deli. A big graffiti-painted garbage truck roared like a lion as it took off down the street. Nothing sounded or looked familiar until they got to Kim's Market. The sign was in both English and Korean. Her mother picked up cabbage to make kimchi, kimchi Korean-style spicy pickled cabbage, and other vegetables and meat. She also found some seaweed, Unhei, Unhei's favorite for soup. It made Unhei smile. Just because we've moved to America, her mother said, doesn't mean we stop eating Korean food. At the checkout counter, a friendly man smiled at Unhei. Helping your mother with the shopping, he asked. Unhei nodded. I'm Mr. Kim, he said. And what is your name? Unhei, she answered. Ah, what a beautiful name, he said. Doesn't it mean Grace? Unhei nodded again. My mother and grandmother went to a name master for it, she told him. A graceful name for a graceful girl, Mr. Kim said as he put their groceries into bags. Welcome to the neighborhood, Unhei. That evening, <clears throat> Unai stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Hi, my name is Amanda, she said cheerfully. Then she wrinkled her nose. Hi, my name is Laura. Hmm, maybe not. Her smile turned down. Nothing sounded right. Nothing felt right. I don't think American kids will like me, she worried as she began to brush her teeth. Ha he, my men eat sushi, she said to the mirror with her mouth full of toothpaste. The next morning, when Unhai arrived at school, she found a glass jar on her desk with some pieces of paper in it. Unhai took one out and, it re and read it out loud. Daisy. That's my baby sister's nickname, but she said you can use it if you want, said Cindy, who sat next to her. Unhai took out the rest of the paper. Tamela, she read. I got it from a storybook, said Nate. She was smart and brave. Unhai nodded and unfolded another piece. Wednesday? Yeah, you came here on Wednesday, said Ralph. Thank you for your help. A smile spread over Unhai's face. Ralph quickly said, we'll put more names in. You can pick whatever you like or pick them all, and you'll have the longest name in history. At 3 o'clock, the bell rang for the end of the school day. Unhai looked out the window and saw it was sprinkling. It's the same rain, she thought, but in a different place. She watched other kids leaving in groups. Hey, a familiar voice called out to her. Unai turned around to see the curly-haired boy again. I'm Joey, he said. And you? Don't you have any name? Unai thought for a moment. Well, I can show you, she said, and took out the small red pouch. She pressed the wooden block on the ink pad and then stamped it on a piece of paper. This is my name stamp, she said. My grandma gave it to me. In Korea, I can use it as a signature when I open a bank account or write a letter. And whenever I miss my grandma, I use it to fill a piece of paper. Want to try it? She offered the stamp to Joey, and he carefully inked the stamp and pressed it hard on the paper. The red characters gleamed against the whiteness. Wow, that's beautiful, Joey said. Can I keep the paper? Sure, Unai said. And then the two of them shared her umbrella as they walked to the school bus. Every day, the jar got fuller with more names, and Unai read them all. She found a few names she liked, Miranda, Stella, Avery. They sounded interesting. I hope you choose the name I put in, Marco told her at snack time. I put in three more, said Ralph, Madison, Park, and Lex. They're my favorite street names. Maybe you should close your eyes and draw a name, Rosie suggested. Ralph frowned. That's silly. What if she doesn't like the name she draws? Well... We didn't get to choose our names when we were born, did we? Rosie argued. Everyone thought about this. So the kids are really trying to be helpful because they don't think she has a name. Let's see. When Unai got home from school that day, her little brother ran to give her a letter. It was from her grandma. She opened it quickly. It said, To my Unai, I hope you are enjoying your new school and new friends. Be sure to help your mother and your little brother. Here the moon is up, but there the sun is up. No matter how far apart we are and no matter how different America is from Korea, you'll always be my Unhai, your grandma forever. Unhai took out her wooden stamp and filled a paper with it. She thought for a long time in front of the bathroom mirror. On Saturday, Unhai walked to Mr. Kim's store. Mr. Kim was helping a customer, but he looked up and greeted her. Hi, Unhai. 
Hello, Mr. Kim, Unhai Un replied. She felt as if she was back in her old neighborhood in Korea. Hey, said the customer, turning around. It was Joey. Your name is Unhee? He asked her with his eyes wide open. Wide. Un Unhee looked quickly at Mr. Kim, then turned to Joey. She nodded slowly. <clears throat> yes, it's pronounced Yoon Hai. And it means grace, Mr. Kim added. Yoon Hai, Joey said slowly, and this time perfectly. It made Un, Un Hai smile. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow, said Mr. Kim to Joey. Thank you, Mr. Kim. See you Monday, Un Hai, Joey said to her. He left before she could ask him why he was at the store. Huh. On Monday, Un Hai came to class early to look at the names one last time. But the jar wasn't on her desk. Instead, there was just a single piece of paper. Paper with a name on it. Un Hai slipped it in her pocket. Where's your name jar, Ralph asked as soon as he saw it was gone. I don't know, Un Hai said. It wasn't on Mr. Kokodos's desk or on any other desk, and it wasn't on the counters or any of the shelves. As other kids arrived, they helped look. Soon, Mr. Kokodos came in and Ralph shouted at him, The name jar is gone. The jar with all the names in it. Gone? Mr. Kokodos replied. With a look of concern, he asked Unhai, Did you get a chance to read all the names? Unhai nodded. She took a breath. I'm ready to introduce myself, she said. Unai wrote her name in both English and Korean on the board. I like the beautiful names and funny names you thought for, of for me, she told the class, but I realized that I liked my name best, so I chose it again. Korean names mean something. Unai means grace. Grace, grace in high, shouted Ralph. Everyone tried to say it. Yin hai, un hi, un hai. Un hi said her name again slowly and clearly. Soon the kids began to say it better. Even Mr. Kokotis. They applauded Un Hi's choice. I was named after a flower, Rosie whispered to Un Hi. Lots of American names have meanings too, Mr. Kokotis reminded everyone. When the class was dismissed, Un Hi heard her new friend say goodbye. Bye, Un Hi. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Un Hi. Un Hi said goodbye and then looked around for Joey, but he was already gone. Unhai, Unhai, come downstairs, Mother called up to Unhai. Your friend is here. Unhai rushed down to see who she meant. There stood Joey, and in his arms was the name jar. Where did you find it? asked Unhai breathlessly. Joey looked embarrassed. Um, well, I took it, but only because I wanted you to keep your own name. And you did. He reached in and pulled out the names. Do you want to keep them? he asked. Thank you. I'll keep them as a souvenir, Unhai said happily. Then she pulled out the piece of paper from her pocket. Do you want this back? Joey grinned. You can keep it. I'll return the name jar to the class. Maybe you could put some Korean nicknames in it for us. Names with good meanings. I could do that, agreed Un Hai. I've already got a Korean nickname, Joey said. Mr. Kim helped me choose it. Carefully, he pulled a small silver felt pouch from his pocket. Then he took out a dark wooden stamp with beautiful Korean characters carved sharply into it. He pressed it on the ink pad and then on the piece of paper next to her name. Ching Ku, read Un Hai. That means friend. And Ching Ku smiled back. There we go. Yes. Thank you. So be proud of your name and wherever you got, whoever you got it from. Have a great day. Bye.